you know that you can read room names of your elements in Revit? Let me show you what I mean. But before I do, we need to make sure that we have Revit Lookup plugin installed in Revit. This will allow us to look behind the curtain and see all available hidden properties and methods that we can use with Revit API. To install it, open Google and type Revit Lookup. Then look for GitHub repository of Jeremy Tamek. Then once you're on this page, you can download installation file right here and it supports the following versions. And if you want to download it for previous Revit versions, you can find installation files right here. Then once you have the installation file, just run it and install for your Revit version. Now once you have it, we can open Revit project and have a look. So here's a simple Revit project with just a two apartments and I can select a few furniture and even plumbing fixtures. Then I'm gonna go to add-ins tab and right here is the Revit lookup plugin that we have just installed. Click on it and select Snoop Selection. And in some versions it's gonna say Snoop Current Selection. And this menu will open up. It's sort of like Revit API X-Ray of your elements. You can see nearly everything what's available inside and you also can work with real values of your elements. Here on the left side you can see your selected elements and on the right side you can see properties and methods of your elements. Then regular text reports values. For example, here I can see that element ID of my table is 6103. And bold text means that it references another element or list of elements and we can look inside of them as well. For example, if I scroll down, I will see room property and it's bold. It means that I can click on it and another menu will open up. This time we get this kind of x-ray of related room. And I can read its name and other properties and methods and get some parameters. By using Revit Lookup, we can navigate Revit API and look at your actual elements. This allows you to work with real values so you know what you get when you code. So that's all cool that we can read it, but some of you wondering how we can actually use it in Revit. And this is where PyRevit comes into play. I'm going to write a simple Python script to read room names and numbers of your furniture and plumbing elements and then write it to one of its parameters. You can also use this code in Dynamo or Revit Python shell, but I'm gonna create a button with PyRevit. And all the code is gonna be available, just read somewhere in the description. I'm gonna go to EFTutor and right here I have already prepared a button and I called it Furniture Rooms. And if I'm gonna open the script, this is everything that I have inside of this button for now. There are a few variables, then I made some imports from Autodesk library and just some description about the button. And now if we scroll down, here's my main section, this is where we're gonna write all the code. But before I'm gonna start coding, I'm gonna write all logical steps as comments so it's easier to follow. First of all, I wanna get all the elements. Then I'm gonna iterate through and get the room if possible. Then I'm gonna read the room name and number. Then I'm gonna get element parameters. And finally, I'm just gonna write room name and number to these parameters. Overall, it's quite simple, but let's go through all of this and I'm gonna explain you all the steps. Get our elements, we're gonna use filtered element collector. If you don't know how to use them, I have a video on my channel as well where you will learn more about it. I'm gonna create a collector by providing my document. Then I wanna filter by category and I'm gonna choose built-in category of furniture. Then I need to filter only instances and not the types. And lastly, I wanna convert it into a list of elements. Now, I can duplicate this line and I'm gonna look for furniture systems and also I'm gonna look for plumbing fixtures. As you can see, this is the only thing that I have to change to get new elements. And obviously, I need to rename my variables. Lastly, I want to combine all of it in single list, so I don't have to iterate through multiple lists. I'm gonna convert each one of them into Python list, so I can simply add it all together. We made the first step, so we're getting all of our elements. The next one, I wanna iterate through this and get my rooms. I'm gonna write for element in all elements. And then I'm gonna just write room equals element room. Because if you remember, when we used the Revit lookup, there was a property room. And this property is gonna return a room where the element is located, if there's any room. Also, let's try to print this room and see if we're actually getting the right element. I'm gonna come in here, click on the button. And then you can see that I'm getting some weird object which is called indexer, hashtag, and then some object. It means that I need to provide something else to actually get my room. And in this case, I know perfectly well that I need to provide the phase. Because as we know, in Revit we can have multiple phases, and in all these different phases we can have different rooms. And when we work with Revit API, we need to specifically tell from which phase we're actually trying to get the room. If I'm gonna pull up the Revit documentation, I'm gonna write room property, and I can see right away that there is one room property with the face in parentheses. And if I click on it, it gets this weird syntax where I'm getting the room, then it says this and face. It just means that I need to tell the Revit from which face I'm trying to get the rooms, because it might not be available in all phases. So let's come back in here, and somewhere here in the variables, I'm gonna get all the phases. Also, I'm gonna convert it into Python list so I can get the last element for my actual face. 
And then in here where I'm getting my room, I need to write square brackets and provide my face. Now let's come back and try to run it again. And this time you can see that I'm getting Autodesk Revit DB architecture room object. This is exactly what we want. So in the next step, we need to read the room name and number. Let's go back to Revit and have a look with Revit Lookup. I'm gonna select a few elements and then add in tab, Revit Lookup, Snoop Current Selection. Then I'm gonna scroll down until I see a room, which is right here. Then it opens another menu. I'm gonna put it on this side. On here, I'm interested in the name of this room, which is gonna be Kochnishi in this case. And then I'm also interested in the number. Would look simple, let's just write room name equals room name. And then we're gonna do the same for the number. I'm also gonna try to print it and see if I'm actually getting the right values. So let's go to Revit, click on our button, and then you can see that I get an error saying attribute name error. The thing is that sometimes with Revit lookup you can see the values, but you cannot get them the same way. And to get it the same way, we actually need to write not the room name, but we can write element name get value and then provide the room. This is unusual way to get the parameter, but it's gonna work in this case. Let's go and try it. I'm gonna click on it. And you can see that I'm getting the room name and it's also combined with the room number together. And this is not exactly what I want because I wanna have my room name separately. We could split it with Python, but to be sure, it's much better to get the actual name so we don't have to split anything. And to do this, let's have a look inside of rooms once again. Instead of using this property name, I can go to parameters and then there's gonna be a parameter which is called name. By the way, I can see that I'm gonna get the right value if I'm gonna get this parameter and apply as string method. If I'm gonna click on definition, in here I'm gonna see the name of the built-in parameter, which is gonna be room name. Let's come back in here. And to read the parameter, we just need to take the room, then use the method get parameter and provide the built-in name of the parameter, as we saw earlier. And lastly, we wanna make sure that we're actually getting the value and not the parameter. I'm gonna write as string. If you don't know how to work with parameters, I also have a video about parameters which you can see right there. And I think we're not gonna have any issues by getting the room number. Let's go to Revit and test it. I'm gonna click on the button and you can see a bunch of room names and room numbers appeared right here. Let's go back to the code. We don't need to print anything. And now we need to get element parameters where we want to write these room values. So in my case, I have already prepared parameters which called room name and room number. You can choose any other parameters. If we have project parameter or shared parameter, you can get it the following way. First, we need to get our element and then we're gonna write lookup parameter. And then we need to write here exact name of this parameter. And I'm gonna do the same for the number. And if you wanna work with built-in parameters, then use this syntax and make sure you know which built-in parameter you're trying to get. Sometimes it's easy to guess, but other times it's not so easy to guess what's the name of the parameter. Then use the Revit lookup tool. And lastly, we want to write these values to our parameters. And this is very simple to do because there is a method called set. So I'm gonna take my parameter, set, and then I need to provide the value. In this case, I'm gonna provide the room name. And then for the room number, I'm gonna provide room number. But before we're gonna go to Revit and test it, actually, we have to make sure that we use transactions. Transactions are made to protect our projects from unwanted changes. So whenever we want to modify our Revit project, we need to initiate transaction, make all the changes and then commit these changes. This is actually very useful, especially for beginners. Then you know that you cannot mess up anything in your project unless you make transaction. So to make transaction, I'm gonna write T transaction. We need to provide document and name of the change. Then we need to start transaction and we need to commit it. And all the changes that we want to do to our Revit project have to be between these two statements. So these lines have to be here. Whenever you have a loop, try to take a transaction outside of this loop. This will make your script 10 or even 100 times faster. So it's like this. Let's add a comment here. And lastly, I want to add a few fail saves. For example, not every single element is going to have room associated with it. So then we have to check if we're actually getting any room and continue only if we have one. And the same thing about parameters. Whenever you get your parameters and you want to set a value, you need to make sure that you actually got some parameter. Because if you're going to misspell something right here, it's not going to get any parameter and it's going to crash your program. So I'm going to write if p room name, then I'm going to set the room name parameter. And also if I get parameter room number, then I'm going to try to set the room number. And I think now our script is complete and we can go to Revit and test it. First of all, let's select some elements and see that our parameter is actually empty. And here I have my room name and room number. And I can click on a few of them. If I click on it, and now if I'm gonna start selecting these elements, I can see that room name and room number is written in these parameters. 
And this is how we can read room names and numbers and write it to our element. Thank you for watching. And if you want to learn more about Revit Lookup and how to use it, have a look at this video where I share more tips about it. And a huge thanks to my supporters on Coffee and Patreon page. My name is Eric Fritz, and I'll see you in the next video. Happy coding, everyone.